Hi, I'm Dr. Jamil Sayaj. And on this podcast, we're going to talk about some deep stuff. I'm here to tell you that you're amazing. And often, the only person who can't see that is you. No matter who you are, what you do, or where you're from, there's greatness in you. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jamil Sayaj, and welcome to the Transformation Starts Today podcast, where I interview leaders, champions, and high performers from all walks of life as they share their stories, the lessons they've learned along the way, and empowering perspectives to help you create an extraordinary life without regret starting today. Today we have with us my friend and brother, Mr. Payman Lorenzo. Payman Lorenzo is the host and founder of the Leaders with a Heart podcast, where he showcases heart-centered entrepreneurs, people with goosebump-inducing stories, to share their gift with the world so that we can inspire others to do good and make the world a better place, one person at a time. He is a three times number one international best-selling author, and he loves inspiring people and empowering them to go after their dreams. He is a connector as he loves bringing and connecting people together. Podcasting has changed his life and it has blessed him in many ways. Now he is on a mission to help entrepreneurs leverage podcasting to find their voice and connect at a much deeper level with their exact audience while getting paying clients with zero ad spend in the process. Payment is an adventurer, explorer, and humanist. He's lived in 10 countries on four continents and counting, and he speaks six languages, and that's just so far. <laughs> Payment, it is an honor to have you with us, brother. Welcome to the show. Brother. Life is all mine. Just like I said all year, uh, before going live, I wish I was there. would give you a hug right now, you know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're so welcome, man. I love your energy. Wonderful smile. Thank you. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling, as we say, I'm feeling fantabulous. I'm feeling blessed. I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling honored. I'm feeling privileged. I'm feeling amazing. I love it. Something our listeners may not know, you and I are co-authors on an international best-selling book just released. And for those on video, they can see it right now in Payment's hand. It's called Leaders with a Heart. And it's just, it's been such a wonderful adventure. We'd love to hear what has this achievement meant for you? Oh man, it's been, I'm still feeling like a kid, uh, you know, uh, on Christmas day, I have uh, the, 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 the bunch of books that I that was able to get still on my desk. Each time I feel, I, I look at them. I feel like a massive smile. Honestly, this is one of the most powerful milestones I've achieved in my life. Because this is a culmination of two years of podcasting. I'm starting in my journey in podcasting. I never expected or knew that this would lead to such a massive, incredible, life-changing path. This is something that honestly makes me really proud because... Mm -hmm. Talking with 200 people, over 200 people in the last 20 months now, two years almost, making incredible connections, friendships. We connect on my podcast. We started to get to know each other, become friends, partners in the book. You even are one of my students and alumni of my podcasting academy. So it's been an incredible journey and honestly, but this is by far so far one of the greatest achievements of my life because bringing people together, not just random peoples, but people that opened their heart, shared the story that, that I connected with as a human level, soul to soul, heart to heart. That is something powerful and beautiful. It's not the people, on, as I keep on saying, the people on my podcast are not just a guest. The clients on my podcast that I get to my podcast are not just a line on a spreadsheet. And even more so, the people you see here at the back of the book, they're yeah. not just any randoms. These are very special friends. And I do mean it. Yeah. Because and 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 honestly, this has been one of the greatest blessings of my life. One of the greatest, most beautiful milestones in my life. So I'm. Um, this is what I said. I'm beyond grateful, thankful, privileged, honored, and just sometimes I have to pitch myself because this is having your book, your own book with a name, but and sharing and showcasing wonderful people, not just random, but people that are friends with you. This is the greatest ride, the greatest business, the greatest adventure I've been on so far. And God knows that I've been I've, I've been blessed with a very adventurous life so far. Yeah, I'm excited for us to dive into that in a moment. But I just want to take a moment to say a few things. One, I love the amount of 
like reverence you have, you know, for what was created, for the process, for the journey. Thank you for, you know, allowing me to be a part of it. And for everyone who's been tuning into the podcast over the last eight, nine months, it's crazy. It's already been that long and you've gotten value from it. Like Payman mentioned, and I'm glad you brought it up. I'm, I wanted to share that. This podcast was co-created. You know, Pay I joined Payman's Academy. He helped me through the process of making mm -hmm. this a reality, taking it from idea, from vision to, you know, implementation and manifestation. And so thank you again so much. And anyone who's gotten benefit from this show wouldn't happen without you. So thank you again. Pleasures all my brother. You know, my motto is to my, for my podcast is to inspire entrepreneurs to do good. But now my motto has evolved, has expanded. And now it is helping good people with powerful messages and beautiful hearts to win. And you're one of the poster child for that. <laughs> in, in a way, you know, you're one of the most genuine human beings. I'm not saying that just because we're talking. This is not a compliment. This is an observation. Compliments come from here. Observations come from here. You know what I mean? Yeah, hard. I really mean it. So it's it's this is what I keep saying. It's one of the greatest rides. I don't. It's not even business for me. It's like doing good together because I'm helping good people get the word out, find a voice, and win. And when they win, I win. We all win together. So and seeing you, brother, shining your your light, something that you mentioned in your in your powerful chapter, shining your light, not playing small getting out there not not caring about not sorry not worrying about what others think but you go in being the best version of you that's what i'm all about and i'm the biggest cheerleader i want to make sure people go after their dreams shine the light because the world needs your light and everyone's light because we all have a message we all have a powerful story and our voice our message our story does matter absolutely man well said and so let's that so let's dive in and so you mentioned sure. You mentioned your journey, your adventurous life thus far. And for those of us who are listening who don't have the privilege and honor of knowing you yet, please share with us what has led you to this point? What has inspired you to do what you do? And what has been this life journey that's brought you to where you are now? You want me to go all the way from the beginning? <laughs> Since birth, you know? <laughs> wow. All right. Oh, wow. Be careful what you're asking. We can be two hours just into that. All right. I was born in Afghanistan and, uh, you know, in a family which was very rich in love and values and, uh, and support. And then once I was, uh, when I turned three or four, my, my family moved to France to escape the war when the Soviet invaded the country. We escaped to France because my father was one of the first people in Afghanistan to get a full scholarship to study in France back in the 60s. He did his undergraduate and, and postgraduate. And when the Soviets invaded in 79, I wasn't born yet, but, you know, communists, they don't like intellectuals. They go, they were going around rounding up intellectuals and making them disappear. And thank God my father at the time was on a mission, on a project, work in France. And that was our opportunity to literally save our lives. So we left. I wrote about how we left the first chapter I, I wrote in, uh, in my first multi-authored book with Mary, our publisher. That by itself would be worthy of a book, would be worthy of a, of a movie. Because the way we, le we left, so picture this. My father's in France. Me, I'm three and a half, four years old. My brother is two. My older sister is only 28 days old. Wow. So, so uh, And prior to that, because the communist, my father first tried to sponsor us to go to France. But then got, word got out. And the communists, just a week before we were supposed to leave, they confiscated my mother's passport. Wow. Somebody, you know, reported us or whatever. So picture this, a young mother with three infants. So the way we left, and of course, we couldn't sell anything, the house or furniture or anything. So we just, one evening, we went to a family's, to a relative's house for dinner. We slept there whenever we went back to our home. And in the morning, we just got on a car to, uh, to get to the border of, of Pakistan. However, back... At that time and in that place, getting on a car wasn't just like easy as it is now. You get on your car, you get on the highway, you get to your destination a few hours later. We went into an actual game of, you know, hide and seek. During the day, we were hiding in caves and shelters, not to get caught. Not to get caught by two types of people. One, the Russians, and two, the Mujahideen. So if any of those groups were to catch you, if you were lucky, they would beat you, rape you, whatever you... God knows horrible things they would do to you. 
sorry, if you were lucky, they would shoot you on the spot. If you're unlucky, they would beat you, torture you, rape you, whatever. God knows until you were die, left to die, like uh, whatever. So that game of cat and mouse lasted 10 days. During the days we were hiding in caves, we were hiding in, uh, in shelters, and during the evening, in the, in the cover of darkness, we were walking by foot on the hills of the Himalaya, because the west, the east of Afghanistan and Pakistan, that's where the foot of Himalaya starts. It's very mountainous, it's very dangerous. So we did that for about 10 days until we finally reached the border of, of Pakistan. So we went to Pakistan, we stayed there with other relatives until you know my father was able to sponsor us. That took about a year to go to, to France. Then I grew up in France. And then grew up in France, and once I was 15, my family moved to Canada, and you know I went with them. And as soon as I was able to, to travel, because traveling was in my family's DNA. My father was an archaeologist, geologist. He was spending most of his time in all these you know, historical sites around the world. My mother as well traveled a lot. So it was a natural thing for me to uh, pick up the relay and start traveling again. First place I went was Brazil, fell in love, and after that, the rest of the world. So I've always been an adventurous loved languages um, and all that. One of the greatest gifts my father gave me when I was a kid, I'm the firstborn, was an actual atlas of the world. So I was really into geography and all that since I was a kid. That's how I started to learn name of the cities and name of the places. And I, I had this natural inclination toward traveling. So uh, I did that. And um, as far as you know, my path, I've done it all the typical you know corporate route i was about to uh to send my application to law school back in 2007 but then some sometimes you know s events can change your life trajectory one day during lunchtime i was um you know there was a bookstore i stopped there there was a book that was calling my name it was the four hour work week by tim ferris mm -hmm. so long story short i spent the entire lunch hour Devouring the book, completely forgot about lunch. The rest of the afternoon, I didn't do any work. I was just focused on the book. The next two days, I called in sick, finished the book. In two days, I ended up not sending my application to law school. Instead, I started my first online business back in 2008. That took me around the world, living the laptop lifestyle, location-dependent lifestyle. Went to uh, a lot of places traveling with it, the U.S., Brazil, Argentina, Thailand, Philippines, Hong Kong, and some other place I probably forgot. So that was my first taste of real freedom, mm -hmm. you know, on my own. And after that, got back home and the business was not as good. Mind you, I was, I was a bit young at the time and I was more into partying and enjoying life than actually focusing on business. But you learn the process. So after that, I came back here, went back to corporate, wasn't for me, went a different path, went to oil fields in Western uh, Canada. That was a great experience, even because even though I was working with you know so-called Canadian rednecks at minus forty, which is three times older than your freezer. When you go outside, you're having pain and and muscles and bones you didn't even knew you had. You know minus forty is no joke. When we when I came back from my, from from uh, Western Canada back to Toronto, went from minus forty to minus twenty. I swear to you. I was going outside with just like this with a t-shirt. <laughs> hey, you're not cold. What's minus 20? After that, I had an opportunity. I couldn't refuse. Football is my religion. Grew up in France. My my dream was to become a professional football player. Fate made it that it wasn't didn't happen. But then I had an opportunity to work in China as a as a professional football coach. One of the powerful lessons I learned is the power of questions. So one day I was when I was laid off from the oil fields, I was talking with I was wondering what came back home in Toronto. I was wondering what the hell I'm going to do now with my life. A friend of mine was teaching English in China. I said, why don't you go teach English in China? I said, I don't want to be an English teacher. But I said, wait a second. That would be a great, wonderful adventure. The guy convinced me to at least have a conversation with a, with a recruiter. So we had a conversation like we're having me and you now. Back then, there was no Zoom, but it was on Skype. Yeah. So uh, we just chit-chatting. Again, the power of question. Was talking about getting to know me. I said, hey, I love football. Football is my religion. He said, hey, can you coach football? I said, yeah. So would you like to coach football in China? I said, oh, absolutely. So okay. Let me see what I can do for you. And I completely forgot about it because we thought we we're just, you know, chit-chatting. And then I swear to you, man, 24 hours later, he had, a, he had a job offer in my inbox to be a football coach, a soccer coach in China. I didn't even read the terms. I just signed it before I, I thought the guy would change his mind, you know? 
<laughs> and next thing you know, I was off to China. So I was there for, for four years, two years as a coach and two years as an entrepreneur. I get involved into e-commerce, get to know all the big guys doing six, seven, eight, nine figures, both Chinese and foreigners. I get to, uh, as I said, I love my connect. I love bringing people together. So I used, I, I, I started helping these guys host events, conferences, meetups, and all that. And toward the end, I was even hosting my own on e-commerce and other topics, even socially. Uh, one of my passion is wine. Growing up in the south of France, I did wine events, wine tasting events in China. That was something I really enjoyed. It was a passion project of mine. I love bringing people together. Then in 2019, I went to Hong Kong because I just was born in China. And also the, the situation between China and Canada wasn't the best, especially after Canada arrested the CFO of Huawei. One of my good friends in Hong Kong, he's also Canadian, told me, listen, it's too dangerous for you to be in China. Come to Hong Kong. We'll work on an e-commerce project together. I didn't need any any further convincing. I, I booked a one-way ticket from from the city I was in China to Hong Kong in 2019. I spent a year in Hong Kong. It was one of my best years, most amazing, fulfilling time in Hong Kong. But from a perspective, from a geopolitical aspect, an economical aspect, it wasn't the best because that was during when Hong Kong had all these massive protests. I don't know if you remember, mm -hmm. millions of people because they were testing against, you know, China wanting to extradite anyone that committed any crime to be judged inside China. And inside China, there's actually no law. It's very arbitrary. And the Hong Kong people were against it because that was basically eroding their, their freedom. So long story short, I was there for a year at the time of my life when the pandemic started. My father and my siblings are freaking out because I was next door to ground zero. They said, come back home. I came home and said, okay, I'm going to be here for just a couple of months. Unbeknownst to me, now it's almost two and a half years. But you know, Jamil, everything happens for a reason. I came back home because that allowed me to spend a year and a half with my father before he left us. I had been living abroad for the past four or five years, just like you. I was taking my relationships, as you wrote in your powerful chapter, I was taking relationship with my loved ones for granted. So he's still young. He was actually last week, my father would have turned 80. But he was very active, very strong, like a, like a bull, very independent. So, okay, he's still going to be for another 20, 10, 20 years. I have time. But then again, once I got here, you know, he started to get diagnosed with cancer. And I was just like you mentioned for your father. I was his main caretaker for a year and a half with my sister. You know, everything happens for a reason. And just before that, Prior to that, when I first got back to, to Toronto and Canada, when I realized that I would be here for longer than I needed to be and I wanted to be, I asked myself again, remember the way I said the power of questions? I asked myself two questions, very powerful. What the hell am I going to do with my life now? And what can I do that's going to allow me to bring together what I love most other than traveling, which is inspiring people, helping people, and connecting people together. That's when my podcast was born. I had this idea initially in March of 2020, but I just sat on it. I was just lazy or not confident in myself because I used to be painfully shy before starting my podcast. I was very self-conscious. I wasn't, I didn't want to be on camera and all that. So it took me about six months until finally in October of 2020, I started to be courageous and start my podcast. And that was the greatest thing I've done in my life. But then, as I said, everything happens for a reason at the right time. During those months uh, and, uh, and uh, between February 2020 to say October 2020. That's also when I really start to have my spiritual awakening. I get to really at least get introduced to it. I started to really connect and talk with people and get really ever since I was a kid, I was beyond captivated, fascinated by by the stars, space, and you know, anything that is extra supernatural, like say past lives. I didn't know what past life was up until the summer of 2020. But again, you know what's really, life is funny and amazing because that was in a way preparing me for what was to come next. And that was in October 20, 2020. Father got diagnosed with cancer. So me getting introduced to past lives and all those things, that was in a way preparing me to, hey, there's more to this life than just this physical life. So once I understood that, that's actually was, was one of the main reasons I was able to not lose my sanity. I was stuck, was in the height of the pandemic. We live in a small town outside of Toronto, in the countryside, nothing to do. 
locked down, and then you have this that, that falls on your lap. Your father getting diagnosed, so you you want to you know you're gonna go crazy. So one of the things that really kept my sanity was starting my podcast because I was having this wonderful conversation with people around the world. And that really helped me to to open my heart and to to be help me in the process of my spiritual awakening. Speaking of opening my heart, you know, and again, through that those times, those dark times, I've had another powerful realization since in the process of my spiritual awakening. And that is, you know what I mentioned, the power of questions? That's something I'm going to be referring over and over and over again. Before my awakening, when something bad happened to me, I used to ask the wrong question. What did they do to deserve this? Why me? Why, why, why? And whining and playing the, you know, the, uh, the, the victim mentality and the victim's game. And that never ends in a good thing because it creates, a, you know, a vicious circle of more negativity. So, after my awakening, I started to ask better questions, more powerful questions. That was, what is this trying to teach me? What is the lesson for me to learn to this? And these two questions were also part of what really helped me to not lose my sanity when I was going through seeing my father degrading day by day, literally dying in, my, in front of us. Then I asked my qu question, what is this trying to teach me? Me going through this experience. What is the lesson for me to learn? And that was... Me being the firstborn son, I've been always extremely spoiled by my parents, especially my father. Every time he was going on some of his work trip at wherever in the world, he was always bringing me some amazing gifts, toys, and whatever. But the best gift, the greatest gift, the most impactful, impactful gift, the two most powerful gifts my father gave me, one as a young boy, an atlas of the world. That really opened my curiosity to the world and traveling and geography. But even more powerful was indirectly in those moments me going through becoming his caregiver with my sister i used to be extremely extremely you know impatient and blowing up for no reason at first even when i replay those scenes in my mind i want to kill myself because i was come on hurry up come on hurry up i don't have time to my father while he was you know battling cancer but then i said slow down buddy this is a man that is dying in front of you you have to be more patient that opened my heart. That made me more compassionate, more patient. And that, in the process, now a completely different person. That, I would say, without hesitation, has been the greatest, single greatest, most impactful, most powerful gift my father has ever given me. And that is to open my heart, to make me more passionate, sorry, more compassionate and more patient. So again, why I'm sharing this is that in any you know, experience we go through, whether it's tragedy, heartbreak, divorce, bankruptcy, whatever you want to call it. Sure, it hurts a lot when you go through that. But there is a powerful lesson, gift in that for us to learn. Because as I keep saying on my podcast, we all go through our fair share of tragedy, dark times and all that. Sure, they hurt a lot, but they don't happen to, to, uh, to, um, to punish us. Nothing happens to us, but for us, for our... We are meant to go to them. We chose them so that we can grow not only as a person but as a soul level. And then those become our story. Then our story becomes our gift. And then ultimately our um, it becomes our duty and responsibility to share those gifts with the world. Because one of my most you know, deepest understanding of this life since I've had my awakening is that why we are here in this planet in this life one of the reasons from my understanding is not only for us to 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 become to grow and become a better person ourselves but also then share those lessons with others with the world so that we can all together collectively rise become better so this is why you know we go through what we go through sure again they hurt a lot but then if you ask a different question not why me what did you deserve this but what is this trying to teach me what is the lesson for me to learn to this then you, you look at it from a much higher perspective, then you see the beautiful gift in every every situation, every everything that happens to you. Not to you, sorry, not to you, but for you, even in tragedy. You shared it in, a, in your beautiful chapter. You, something similar to what I went through, your father, you know, being a caregiver for him for three and a half years, that made you realize the power of Let's stop wasting time. I don't need to play small enough. I need to 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 tell my 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 true self shine, live each day as it was the last day because no, 
tomorrow is not guaranteed. Nobody knows that. Just like you mentioned, you had two powerful things that you shared from your story. You had two of your cousins pass away at the very young ages, and none of them could have seen that because they thought, oh, I'm in, you know, especially when you're in your late teens and early 20s, you feel like invincible, that sickness and dying, that doesn't concern you, but it does concern all of us. So again, maybe I'm rumbling too much right now going in circles, but the point is everything, you know, there is a, there is a powerful lesson, there's a powerful gift in everything we go through. Nothing happens to you to punish you, but to for you to help you grow to the next level of your evolution, not only in this physical life, but also at the spiritual life, at the soul level. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm very passionate. And that's something that I, that I want to share now. That's my message to make people understand and realize that their voice matters, their story matters, that we all have a story, a gift to share. And this is what I'm focusing on now for the rest of my days to, to make people understand, realize that they are here for a reason. Even if their message can inspire just one person, you know, for us to be impactful doesn't mean that me and you, Jamil, we have to change the entire world. If we can, that would be wonderful. But even if you, to your podcast, to your work, to your, to your books, whatever you do, and me from my podcast, if, if me and you, we can inspire just one person to, to, uh, to, uh, to take their courage in, in, their, in, their, in their hand, to, to take their life in their hand, to go after their dreams, to, to, uh, to make their voice heard, to share their story, and that story can inspire someone else and so on and so forth, then together we can create a ripple effect around the world that's going to be unstoppable. And this is, you know, one of, part of my branding is one plus one in math is two, but in real life, is 11. Three people coming together, it's not three, but 111. Four people coming together, is not four, but 1,111. Why? Is because when people with the same vision, the same mentality, the same goals come together, they exponentially explode. So this is what I'm all about. This is about bringing people with the same mindset, the same vision, the same goal, to have a bigger impact. So together we can make the world a better place. I don't know if that answered your question, but I think I went all over the map for the past, I God knows how many minutes. You, you did beautifully, man. I think uh, that, uh, I thank you so much. I didn't know your early- That's your, my story. So, yeah. and, 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 and that- yeah, and that Thank you. I, I did not know about the early aspects of your life. And when you say, you know, it's an adventure rich life, <laughs> no exaggeration there. And you mentioned- and There's so <laughs> much I didn't even mention because I would be not- appropriate because I work hard and I party hard. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, and you're more of a drinks in person, but you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. no, I'm blessed on that way. Yeah. And just what you mentioned this, uh, you mentioned something that I fully agree with, you know, your life is an example of a life that is absolutely like make a movie out of that, <laughs> write a book on that. Like that, that's oh, well, God willing. That's one of my goals, you know? Yeah. And you know, there's so much there and there's a short, little fun story that comes to mind when you were talking about you know making an impact even if it's just for one person that's enough I, I, I forgot where i heard this from it was a story i heard years ago but basically there's a little girl on a beach and there's a bunch of starfish on the floor and she's picking them up one at a time and just looking at them and then throwing them back into the ocean and imagine you know there's so many starfish it's like you can barely see the sand right like there's that many of them and there's some older guy, he's kind of grumpy, and he's sitting in the corner somewhere, and he sees her. And he goes, little girl, what are you doing? And she goes, you know, I'm throwing the starfish back into the ocean. And he's thinking, like, all or nothing perspective. There's so many of these starfish, there's no way you're going to get all of them. So he says to her, you know, you're never going to get all of them. What kind of difference is this going to make? And then she picks one of the starfish up, looks at it, throws it back in the water, and she says, well, it made a world of difference for that one. That's what that's all it matters. Yeah. That's what matters. And, and so with that in mind, for everyone listening, whether it's a podcast, a book, a conversation that you have, you share your gift through music or through your career, whatever that is, you, spend, you impacting the life of one person is what it's all about. You know, we I think we we tend to grandiose it, make it grandiose and think that if I'm not impacting millions, then like what's the point? 
don't never undervalue, you know, a small audience. A quick story that this is a learning lesson for me. But I, uh, after medical school, I lived in Arizona. Uh, I was there for five years. And I remember I was uh, working at this uh, medical clinic and I was giving a talk. And we were anticipating local talk in the community. You know, 20 people, 30 people, 40 people were going to show up to this thing. And I was very excited and I prepared, you know, a, a lot for it. And I was ready to go. And I get there. And there was three people in the audience. Now, two of them were coworkers of mine. They were already there and they just happened to stay. Only one person showed up from the community. Now, initially, before the talk started, I sat there and I was disappointed. I was like, well, this sucks. Like only one person showed up and like, uh, and then I paused myself and I said, hold on a second. This person showed up. They could have, this was at like 5, 6 p.m. They could have went home to dinner with their family. They could have done this. They could have done that. They decided to come here and give me their time. Like, I am going to make the most out of this. I'm going to honor that they're like the sacrifice they made to be here. And I'm going to act as if there's 5,000 people here and I'm going to give them everything I've got. So initially I was undervaluing a small audience. I give this talk, we have an amazing time. I find out after this lady is the head of the Chamber of Commerce and she invites me to speak in front of all the different businesses a few weeks Exactly. Later. And the, the example is you never know. And so that's not why I did it. I didn't know who she was, but don't undervalue the small audience. Like start with whoever's there, make a difference for the person who's in front of you. And if totally. you had, not only is it so fulfilling in your own experience, but you don't know what opportunities that could be created as a result of that. Absolutely. And just to piggyback on that, just you mentioned a couple of minutes earlier, you know, we all have a, a message, a gift to share it, share it in whatever way is, is more comfortable for you. For me, it's podcasting for you, for example, maybe writing for someone else, it might be painting, uh, sculpture, uh, drawing, music, dancing, whatever way is your gift, your, your preferred way to express yourself. Do it because that's what we are here for, to share it. And also on what you said here about, you know, the people, that's exactly it. Just like you said, she happened to be the uh, the head of the uh, you know, Chamber, of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. What if the person, you, even one person shows up, but that person happens to be, let's say, for example, the secretary for, for Steve Jobs, for example, even though Steve Jobs is not here. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we never know. That's all you need. Even though if, if that person was just, you know, someone just like you in a, in a position of power, of, of influence, if you can inspire just one person and that person happens to be the right person, even if she's that person not the right person, maybe he or she knows someone that knows someone is going to open the world to you. Yeah. Could you share with us, you know, it's, so much of your story, I think, answers this question, but I'd love to ask it directly because there might be something you want to add to it. What is it about podcasting that makes you so passionate about it? I'm sure you've all already noticed it. <laughs> I love I love talking. <laughs> I love talking. And as I said, I used to be painfully, painfully, painfully shy. But past podcasting has allowed to me to kill my shyness and find my voice. And now that I find my voice, I cannot just shut up because it's just like you said, words of power, words of a life. Of, of, this, of themselves so when you can share your message your story me connecting me and you we connected got to know each other you know this is where the magic happens you know before that i can do an entire talk just on how podcasting has changed my life but what i really love about it is the connections not just from a business perspective but also the personal perspective it made me a better person more you know, kill my shyness, made me more confident, made me a better listener, made me more empathic with people to really connect with them at a deeper level of this wonderful conversation. Learn from all these people because podcasting has been, in a way, not only part of my spiritual awakening, but also part of my ongoing education. I'm having a wonderful conversation with actual world-class experts in areas that I thought I knew about, but also in most important in areas I had no idea, like Reiki. NLP, sure, NLP I'd heard about a little bit before, but I had a vague idea or any other things. Like I had a lady on my podcast about muscle tuning. Muscle tuning sounds very similar to say, uh, um, what do you call it, a chiropractic, but it's not. It's something that touches only the muscles. It's something that can be 
incredibly life changing for the right person, or for example, energy healing, or you know, unlocking your, uh, your your mental powers or your keys and all that. I had no idea about that, and I learned to that about that on my podcast. It's about me. I've always been very curious. I love learning, and there's no better way to learn than speaking with actual experts. So for me, and of course, from a business perspective, you know, what is business? Despite what all these gurus try to make us believe, it's a numbers game. Sure, numbers matter, but it's not a numbers game. Business is a relationship nurturing process. Me and you, Jamil, we do business with people we can relate, connect, and trust. Let's say you're looking for an accountant or, or uh, say, a, a doctor, whatever. Sure, they all qualify. They all have all the credentials, certifications. But the one you're going to do business with is the one you connect the most as a person. If you don't connect to them as a human being, you don't care if they have 55,000 PhDs. It's not going to happen. So same thing here. Ever since I started my podcast, nowadays I only do business with people I get to know through my podcast. I'm getting pitched all day long, multiple. I get so many friend requests. They start pitching me from the beginning. I completely ignore them. I even now have like an automatic resp uh, response that says, hey, if you want to do business with me, I'm happy to, to do so. But first, just know, I only do business with people I know and connect and trust. So if you want to do business with me, let's get on a call to get to know each other first. And guess what? 99% of these people, they don't even bother. Mm -hmm. So podcasting has opened up the world for me. It allowed me to find my voice, connect with incredible people, made wonderful friendships like you and so many other people, get me to realize one of my all-time dreams to become an author. Now I'm not only an author, but also a publisher. And God knows what else. It's just an incredible platform to share my story with my audience. Because when someone listens to your podcast, it's for two reasons. One, because they're interested in your topic. But most importantly, it's because they like you. If they didn't like you, your sense of humor, your personality, you wouldn't waste the precious time, especially when there are a billion other podcasts out there to you for 30, 40, 60 minutes. They listen to you because they like you. And guess what? When we like people, when we connect with them, Doing business with them is a natural organic progression. Just like I like to say in my funny, cheesy line, when people connect with you, you don't have to pitch, convince, seduce, or kidnap them to do business with you. It's going to be a natural automatic progression. Yeah. yeah. So, is, in your experience, what do you believe holds people back from sharing their story, from sharing their uh, authentic, you know, truth? That's a great question. You know, one thing I do after each of my classes, podcasting classes, get to talk with a person and get their feedback. And one question I ask them is, what was holding you back from starting your podcast? The most common reason that I hear is that, and that's something that really was painful for me to, to hear because I was like them, is that my story doesn't matter. Worst, I don't even have a story. Or who am I to share my story? Who's going to listen to me? I don't have a PhD after my name. I'm, I don't have a million, you know, audience of followers. I'm not the best looker or I'm, I'm not this or that. That's honestly what's really holding people back. And I was like that as well. I was very shy. I was very self-conscious. I was really, who am I to, to go in front of a camera to, to talk? Nobody's going to listen to me. I don't have anything of value to share. That's what I believe. That's what a lot of people are, are believing. And the reason for that is that we take for granted our gifts, uh, something that seems second nature for us. We all have something, a gift that we do without even thinking, but we don't, we don't appreciate it enough because for us, it's nothing special. But yet, I can't tell you how many times, Jamil, after even speaking with someone after five minutes, and I just notice, and I say, oh my God, you know, you're sitting on a gold mine, you have a gift that would really help a lot of people and you can, you can build a great business out of it. Oh, really? Yeah. That's nothing special for me. They don't, we don't appreciate our greatest gift. Just like Antoine saint exupéry in his, in his uh, eternal book, you know, Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince, the guy goes around the world looking for happiness. Well, happiness was right there in front of him. Mm -hmm. He didn't appreciate it enough. We don't appreciate what we already have. For us, they're nothing special. We take it for granted. And that's the number one mistake we all do. I did it. I'm sure you did it as well. And everyone does it. Yeah. And that's where the problem is. 
value yourself, value your, your gift. You, you have wonderful gifts. All of us have a gift. Even a five-year-old boy or girl has a gift. Otherwise, he or she would not be here. And I want to just share something. I love that answer. Just for everyone listening, using payment story as an example of what he's talking about, he had the thought, who's going to listen to me? I don't have anything to share or contribute. I don't have a story. So I'm not going to do anything. And like you said earlier, for about six months, you had the idea for the podcast. Because and being shy and being very self-conscious of a camera. Yeah, all of those. And then for like the six months, you had the idea, you kind of sat on it. But now fast forward to three years and now it's okay. He's got this podcast over 220, I believe, interviews. He's connected people all around the world with each other. To give an example here, um, I'll give that example in a moment because I think it's, 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 it's beautiful. You've got, and I'll share, I'll share it right now. <laughs> so right. It's like, um, your first payment helped me start my podcast in addition to many other people to start their podcast. Everybody's individual podcast then impacts the lives of other people. That happened because he had the courage to go down his path. Then I think about, I remember before my podcast, listening to one of Payman's interviews on his podcast, and there's a beautiful soul named Mr. Paul Dunn. And this oh, guy yes. runs an international charity organization. And I listened to the episode and I thought, this was awesome. I want to be able to contribute to that charity. So I reached out to Payman. Payman connected me with him. He and I have a call. I end up structuring my business in such a way that every time there's a new client, impact in the world happens. And, you know, over 120,000 impacts have already happened around the world in people's lives in the last six months. Wow. But all because I saw that interview with Payman, and that only happened because he decided to have the courage to push through anyway and say, I'm going to do this. So with all that being said, what could be possible? If you put your story out there, what could be possible if you shared from your heart and you just said, can I just help one person? We don't know the impact that we're going to have. And so often when I hear, when I ask people, you know, what brought you to what you're doing right now? They often tell me, you know, what I do now, I never thought I'd be doing this like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but you just kind of follow the breadcrumbs as they show up one step at a time. And the impact that you can have on the world as a ripple effect is so immense. One last thing before I kind of throw it back to you. I've shared this story, I think, on the podcast before, but regardless, there's this story and a mentor of mine shared it with me, and it was beautiful and it's unfortunate at the same time. There was this guy, he's in his 40s, I believe, and he was reflecting back about his schooling. And he remembered there was this teacher when he was in like third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, that this teacher was amazing. Everybody loved this teacher. The teacher really cared about her students. So everything was wonderful. And he thought about the teacher and he's thinking, well, she's probably, you know, 60, 70, something like that right now. And he's like, I'm going to reach out to her. It'd be cool to touch base. Let her know because I, you know, I am the way that I am right now because she was so loving and encouraging and she believed in me that I really pushed myself and I've created all this success in my life. And I don't know if that would have happened without her. So he reaches out to her and she was at this kind of uh, retirement home and no one really ever called her. And she was so touched by his call and she's crying. And he's like, you know, why are you crying? And she said, she didn't know that all these students loved her because nobody ever told her. And she didn't know that she made any impact on any of them. And she was sitting there thinking in her heart in that, you know, retirement home, did my life matter? Did I make a difference? Like, I feel like I didn't really do anything important, not realizing that with this kid and with all the other students, her impact was immense. She just didn't know. And so it's like, you know, we never, we, we like payment said, you might take it for granted. You don't even realize the ripple effect of impact that you're having. You are helping people. And then what they're doing with that in the world is only possible because your presence in their life. But I'm going to pause that and throw it back to you. Beautiful. And I'm just going to piggyback on that. Uh, you remember the movie, The Butterfly Effect? Mm -hmm. Long time ago, but yeah. 20 years ago, 2003. You know, a butterfly waving their wing, for example, in Indonesia, can cause, a, say, a hurricane, say, in, in the Gulf of Mexico. It's not that far-fetched. Meaning that you or me just encouraging someone 
just like the, the wonderful uh, example you shared of that teacher and a student, me and you having the right word to someone that for us is like absolutely meaningless, just saying, hey, you can do it. I believe in you. You have a, Your story matters. Your voice matters. That can be the catalyst for that person to say, you know what? Maybe they're right. What if they were right? Instead of asking, who am I to do this? What if they were right? Ask a better question again. Remember what I said? The power of questions. Yeah, yeah. And that is the start of that person really going and embracing, you know, taking their, their life in their hands and going and spreading their wings, finding their voice in the process, and really impacting the world. You know what I said and always say? One plus one equals 11. That's actually part of my branding. Yeah. One plus one plus one plus one is not four, but 1,111 exponentially exploding. So this is a powerful way of saying because just like me and you having this wonderful conversation today, even if one person listening to this were to be inspired by that, to do something about their lives, to embrace their, their gift and sharing it in the world to whatever means is more natural for them. And that to me, that's, that's, that, that podcast has been successful. Absolutely. When when you talk about the power of questions, you know, I believe this is very powerful. Yeah. yeah. And for me, it's like when you ask better questions, you you get better answers. And a question as an example that somebody might be listening to us right now, and they might have that inclination, that desire to like reach out to do something in the world, make an impact in people's lives. But then they might have the question, "What if it doesn't work out?" And just we talked about asking better questions. What if it does? <laughs> What if it works out greater than you possibly could dream of? And the, you know, just asking yourself that question can completely change the trajectory of your life. Yeah. And then you follow it up with, okay, so there's the, what if it doesn't work out? I shift it to what if it does? And then you add, you know, what if it's better than I could possibly have dreamed? Okay. And you know, that would be awesome. How are you going to find out by trying? <laughs> That's the only way you're going to know by putting yourself out there and when you do that, you know, life can change so miraculously. Well, absolutely. One thing I wanted to ask you, Payman, you know, the foundation of this show is to help people create an extraordinary life without regret. In your life experience and with your wisdom, can you share with us, how would you advise anyone listening to create an extraordinary life without regret? I will answer this question by quoting you. Just on your chapter, you says you say, and again, ask yourself, where is my life? Is it what I want it to be? What would I love to create and experience instead? What's one action, the one step I can take now to move my life forward in my desired direction? I so love that. That's why I want to share that. And this is all it. Just like, what if it works? What is the one thing I can do today? Not tomorrow, because what is tomorrow? Just like you perfectly said it. Tomorrow is the day you planned yesterday. And to answer your question, man, so what was the question again? <laughs> How would you, I appreciate, it. I haven't had anyone respond to that by quoting me. <laughs> hey, you. believe in you, brother, believe in you, you know, absolutely. preach what you're talking about, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, so the question is, how would you advise everyone listening to create an extraordinary life without regret? Do what you always wanted to do. Don't, don't worry about what he or she might think, because you know what? People have their own life, their own problems that... Don't make, you know, we have an expression in French that says, don't make a mountain out of a mouse. Yes. You know, what you think is something big, it's not even under radars. They don't even concern about that. So listen, do what you always wanted to do. Just like, again, I'm going to quote you again. Don't live small. Go out, spread your wings. And just like, again, Sorry for being repetitive, but I'm gonna quote you again. What if today was your last day? Yeah, yeah. And if, if, you know, just do what you always wanted to do. What's holding you back? It's you. Nothing is holding you back. No one is, you know, holding your hand, so to speak, behind you. No, no one is putting a gun to your head. Don't do that. No, it's you know, it's right here. Yeah. Whatever, everything you see around you, the the the, the desk you're sitting, the computer you're talking, the microphone you're talking, they all started here, in someone's mind. What is in your mind? What is in your vision? You know, our brain is like is like a projector. What you what you think, you can project it. Just like the, the saying says, what you dream about, so within, so without, so to speak. Everything we created here, we are creators. We are the greatest 
film directors in, in, in the universe, bigger than Spielberg and uh, Tarantino and all those guys combined. You have the power. What do you want to create? And yeah. you, have, you have, as you say in front, you have carte blanche. You have, you can create whatever you want. Just start with what you want. And, but it all starts with one thing. And that is understanding that your your voice matters, your story matters. You went through that for a reason, and that reason was not for you to to pain, but for you to to become a better person, to grow, and then take those gifts, share it with the world, whatever it is. Even if you spend say five years in jail, because I had people in my podcast that spent in jail, and they were saying that those were the most profound, life changing moments in their lives. And now they took that as not as a punishment. Sure, it was not fun to go through that but those were the you know the greatest gift in their lives if you if you look at it from the from the perspective of asking the right question what is this trying to teach me what was the lesson for me to, to learn through that or through tragedy divorce bankruptcy whatever you want to call it injury there's always a beautiful gift in that and that is your gift that is your duty your responsibility to share it don't hold yourself back find your voice share your voice spread your wings and just like Nike says, and I will add one little thing to it, just F do it. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. There's a, I love that French expression you shared, don't make a mountain out of a mouse. I think that the fear that we have around doing whatever it is we want to do is far worse than the doing of the actual thing. Yes. When we get so caught up in our mind we miss the opportunity that's right in front of us. Like you said, nothing's really holding us back except for the fear, that internal dialogue that we're thinking and believing. Sorry to interrupt you. I will just share one very specific example to me. You see my book? Yeah. I thought I would never be able to, to make it happen. I sat on this. I, I started talking with Mary at the end of uh, mid-May of this year. Up until end of mid-July, I had not done anything because I was holding myself back. I said, well, Who's going to say it's a yes to me? Who's going to share the story? Who am I to do that? I have not done that. So it took me the entire month of June, almost two months, sitting on it, not doing anything, not even, you know, approaching people. And then finally, I said, you know what? Screw that. One night at two o'clock in the morning, I woke up to get some drinks, some, some water, and I had this vision. I saw the book on my, on my table. Once I saw it, I said, listen, it's already there. The universe has already made it. You cannot hold yourself back. And believe it or not, I was able to fill the book in two weeks after that. Yeah. In two weeks. So again, we are the only one holding ourselves back. No one else. Yeah. And and to, to be with that example and just expand on it, when the physical copy of the book got delivered to, to the house over here, I remember holding it in my hand and seeing my name on the cover with some of the other authors and just seeing that that is a consequence of a series of yeses that were that let's say from my perspective that i made where first it's the yes to to write the chapter the yes to say i want to be a part of the project the yes to say i'll i want this story to be out there actually it happened even before the the, the first yes was for you to say yes to come share your story on my podcast even before yeah. that to get on a on a meet and greet call with me about 2 years ago yeah, exactly. And yeah. so everything is like this series of yeses. And so you never know what the yes today is going to lead to down the road. Don't play small. Yeah. Just to quote uh, a certain Dr. Jamil uh, Sayer, don't play small, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. The, um, there's so much richness in the experiences that you've shared with us. And I'd love to ask you, what is, if there's one that stands out, please share that one. If there's a few, that's okay too. What decision have you made or risk that you've taken that you're deeply grateful for? Again, the last question I asked on my podcast, and that's my favorite question to ask my guests is, what is the smallest thing you've done that has had the greatest, most profound positive impact in both your life and your business? For me, it's this, starting my podcast. This has completely turned my life around, change it, blessed it in countless ways because this was me saying yes first to buying the, the microphone i sat on that even for two months <laughs> yeah. i spent hours and hours on amazon looking for for microphones and all that watching endless videos on youtube 
a time came, you know, screw that. Let's just buy whatever, just buy one. Yeah. I'm a Libra, and we Libra sometimes can be very, very, take a long time to make a decision. You know? Um, Even something as simple as buying a microphone took me almost two months. I was what? watching countless videos on YouTube and spending hours and hours on Amazon looking at every, reading all the comments. You know what? Screw that. Just get one. And with, with that story, just a quick interjection. Very, it's very easy for us to, in a way, distract ourselves and think that we're quote unquote making progress when what we're actually doing is we're watching the video or we're reading yeah. about it, but we're, we're doing everything except for doing it. And so like I said, buying the microphone instead of which one is the right one, any microphone, even if it's not great quality, if it gets you episode one, it's going to be better than no microphone. <laughs> or, I might've been better off than not even buying one, just going just with the microphone that comes with the computer itself, just to get uh, to, to not waste those two, two months, you know? And just starting and getting the repetition. I was just actually telling a client of mine today, there is a, it was a study done. I believe it was done on college kids. And it was very fascinating. And it was the same class, but it was two different classes. And the teacher gave the same assignment, but in two different ways. And it was like a, like a pottery class. It was like they were making something. It was some type of pot or something. And the idea was with one of the classes, the teacher said, you're going to be graded based on how many pots you make. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of that semester, maybe they made 50 pots, 100 pots, 500 pots, however many it was. And the other class, the teacher said, you will be graded based on one perfect pot. Like you will be graded on making a perfect pot. At the end of the semester, which class produced better pots? The first. The one that made like thousands of them because their first 50 weren't that good and their next 100 were okay. But at the end, their pots looked professional. But the other one, and they probably had fun and enjoyed the process along the way of just progressing and getting better. But the first one puts uh, the other group rather, if I know that everything's riding on this one pot, I end mm -hmm. up creating so much pressure on myself that first of all, the experience likely isn't going to be enjoyable and fun. I'm probably not going to learn that effectively because I'm learning under like tense conditions that I'm you know creating and, and uh, throwing on myself. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be a great experience and my pot is not going to be that great either. So some people think, quality first over quantity. But in this situation, it's actually the opposite. The quantity creates the quality. And, and so the last point here is the idea that you think the first thing you produce has to be perfect. I promise you, you're the only one putting that expectation on you. Yep. Everyone else knows you're going to not be great in the beginning and that's okay. But if you're, if it's enthusiastic, enthusiastic, if it's an authentic expression of who you are, people can tell you're genuinely doing whatever it is you want to do. You're going to pick it up relatively quickly and you're going to get better over time. But the met them like Joe Rogan, someone like him, you go on YouTube or whatever, Spotify, and he's got what, 1500 episodes or something. You look at them now, but if you oh, go man. on YouTube and check out his like episode six, nowhere near as polished and good as it is now. But he has episode 1500 because he was willing to make episode six. You know, I will, that's beautiful. You know, I will start by saying there's one quote that Tony Robbins always says, repetition is the mother of all skills. You know, it's what we learned. Just like you mentioned, if you go look at my very first podcast episode on my YouTube channel, I would, I, I would be, I'm, I'm still embarrassed I was way too close. It was dark. I, I chose a dark background. I was wearing a hat. I was like almost the camera was right on my nose. I could easily move it. But no, I, I leave it on purpose so people can see the progress. Oh, yeah. Mind you, I'm still not there. You know what is the, the number one bestseller phone of all time? Mm. iPhone 1. Yeah. And yet, compared to today's phone, it's a piece of crap. Yeah. And I'm thought we're talking about the the biggest company in the history of, 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 of our civilization, Apple. Yeah. Look at it. I still have an iP Apple, uh, iPhone 4. That, that that piece of crap barely works today. It doesn't <laughs> even open YouTube, you know? <laughs> so, so, Yet. Something that uh, you just brought up in my mind, which is fun, is 
you know, I've been making videos online since 2015, and I think I'm on video number 460-ish around there. Whoa. And and I remember now when I make them, you know, they're always going to be improving. It's not, but now when I make it, you know, holding the phone out, maybe, you know, <laughs> arm's length, I've got like, my hand is steady. I'm Get a selfie stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have the selfie stick. That's my arm. But it's like I'm holding the phone out. I've got like I know exactly what I want to say, and I can usually do it in one take, if not you know two or three. But if you go back to my first handful of videos, it's I was in my apartment in Arizona, my my second year of med school, and it's funny because you probably would get like motion sickness watching it because I'm <laughs> I'm moving so much. The background is flying around. I've had people message me, tell me, like your video is making me nauseous. <laughs> Can you stop moving? I love your content, but I can't keep watching it. I just don't do any video, just do the audio, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it just it goes to show, you know, I had some things I wanted to share. I was really passionate about it. And you get better by doing it. Absolutely. And and so as we begin to wrap up today, Payman, for anyone who's listening who is considering whether it's a podcast whether it's writing whether it's really putting themselves out there they're on the fence what what message do you have for them message i have for them is that your voice matters you have a story and your story need needs to be shared far and wide this is why you have been born in this you decided to be born in this life otherwise you would not be here nothing happens for no reason nothing is random there's a purpose for everything even if you were to be a low, so to speak, you know, flipping burgers at McDonald's, there's a reason for that. We chose that. You chose that. And and there is a beautiful lesson, message, and gift for you to share through that. Mm. So whatever you do, appreciate your, your gifts. Value your gift. Don't take them for granted. Don't undervalue yourself. Don't undervalue your gifts. You have a powerful gift, a powerful message, a voice. You know, that voice is your, is your story. That story is your gift. That gift now is your duty, your responsibility to share it with the world. Because if all you did was go to a coast through life and just become a better person, that would be a good, good start, which would only be using 5% of the real potential of why you're here. The 95% is sharing it with the world. Yeah. Share it to whatever means is more natural for you. For me, it's through uh, speaking and podcasting. For someone else, it's going to be through writing. For someone else, maybe through drawing, singing, composing music dancing, doing TikTok dances, whatever, whatever it is, whatever is your way of, of, of expressing yourself, sharing your gift with the world, do it. The sooner you do it, the better. And once you do it, once you get on that path, an entire new world will open up to you, just like it did for me, just like it did for you. It's going to bless your world in countless ways. It's going to enrich your life tremendously through amazing, wonderful relationships partnerships and the rest is just just like an empty book uh, sorry an empty piece of paper it's for you to you your your own film director yeah. life is like a book each day we're writing our each line each you know paragraph each page a chapter you have the the universal pen in your hand so to speak mm-hmm. how do you want to to fill your book what kind of Characters, stories, adventures do you want to experience? It's like a white canva. Yeah. And part of the, and and I love that. And part of you know, this is for me and my perspective. People who are listening, you may not know fully what that gift is and what it entails, in the same way that if I'm an author of a book and I and I start chapter one, I might not know what chapter 20 is going to be about. No. But just starting chapter one dramatically enhances the likelihood that chapter 20 is going to happen. And, but so in that same way, you might have some inclin- inclination of how you want to begin exploring what this gift is, sharing what this gift is, even if it's just, you know, I'll share this, but I don't really know where I'm going to go after that. Start. And then let's see what start, happens. That. Start and speak not uh, through a script, not even speak with your mouth, but speak from the heart. The more authentic you are, the more genuine you are, the better, deeper you can connect with the audience and people will really appreciate you because nobody wants just another polished, corporate-looking, perfect guy or girl. No, they want to see the real you. 
if there is if you have a kid coming in the background if you have a cat or dog coming in the background bring them on show them people yeah. want to see that they want to see that you're authentic you're relatable you, you, you know people want to see that they don't want to see you being sitting in a in a million dollar studio yeah that's nice but that's not what people people want to be able to connect and relate with you if you see you sitting in your kitchen table or whatever that's okay yeah if you have a kid on your lap if you have your cat meowing and your dog waffing in the background that's fine bring him on people love that people want to see it people want to relate with you just like I, on my podcast i like as i keep saying i like to have a look so to speak under the hood to see what's in your heart to have a heart-to-heart conversation answer the name leaders with a heart yeah i don't care what you've achieved we are if i cannot connect with you as a person but if i connect with you as a person then wow I want to really get to know you deeper. What do you do? How can we work together? How can we do business together? Because at that time, you will not need to convince me, to pitch me, to seduce me, to kidnap me to do business. It's going to be a natural, automatic, organic progression. Oh, what do you do, Jimmy? Oh, I do it. Okay. Let's see how we can work together. Yeah. This is how business happens. This, was, this is how magic happens. It's all about connections. Yeah. Man. And so with all that being said, what is exciting you right now in your world that you're working on, that you're bringing out into the world, sharing with people. So this is part volume one. Yeah. I'm working already on volume two. Awesome. Volume two is going to planning to, to come out at the end of January. Now I'm finally able to travel again because, you know, with all the craziness, Canada was probably the, the strictest country in the world in terms of, you know, restriction and travel. Now that is over. I'm planning to travel again at the end of October, early December, early November. And I'm being torn between where to go because there's so many places I want to go. South America, Europe, Asia. You know, the, the world is my oyster. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm very excited about helping more and more people find their voice, get the courage to go to, to share their story, share their message, share their gift first and embrace the gift that they've been sitting on, the gift that has been laying dormant inside of them. Help them realize they have it and help them bring it to the world through my podcast, through my books, into what, through whatever other means I can help them. Just like I said, if I can inspire just one person to connect with their gift and bring that gift to the world, then for me, I feel that my life has been successful. I will share one last quote. I don't remember exactly all the details, but I was reading that there was a bunch of billionaires were asked, what is your definition of success? They all gave their other answers, but one stood out forgot who he was. It was a long time ago. But what he said, I will never forget. And that was, if as a result of me living here today, someone has been able to breathe happier, better, and be able to smile, then that to me is, 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 is a definition of success. And that's something that was really touched my heart. And that's something that, that I tried to implement in my life. If I can aspire just one, and that's my motto, inspiring entrepreneurs to the good. If I can aspire just one person to the good, to their business, to their work, to whatever way they do, and they go on to inspire another, and so on and so forth, then again, I feel that my life has been meaningful, impactful, and purposeful. That's a beautiful way to finish up today, man. Thank you so much. And for our listeners who want to connect with you, learn more about how they can work with you, anything like that, what does that look like, and how do they uh, get a hold of you? Well, I have uh, best ways on Facebook. Uh, I can leave my Facebook uh, link in the show notes also my calendly to get on a on a meet and greet call it's not a sales call it's not a discovery call i don't do sales because i'm the worst salesperson in the world <laughs> instead i like to connect heart to heart with person with people and my podcast leaders with a heart uh youtube channel leaders with a heart and this is how you can connect with me and if you're ready to start your podcast get to and to share your world it to me and i would be honored to to help you make that happen wonderful yeah i would definitely highly recommend if you're looking to start a podcast partnering with payment you know he made it so simple for me and you know three two to three weeks later i had a podcast and i had everything i needed and everything worked actually out. you did it in two weeks <laughs> yeah i did it in two <laughs> because we're traveling you know yeah yeah and so uh he, he's flexible he's able to work with you and if you don't if you're sitting there going all right i got this thing I want to share. I have no idea where to get started. He's your guy. And so 
Thank you so much, Payman, for being here today. Thank you for everyone who is taking the time to be with us. I deeply, deeply appreciate your time, your attention, your energy. I hope that you enjoyed this episode today and please share it far and wide. Share it with anyone you know. They've got something on their heart. You see the greatness in them that maybe they don't see in themselves. Share yes. this and hopefully it inspires them to share their gifts with the world. And please, you know, sh um, leave, leave a review, whether it's on Apple or Spotify or YouTube comment, wherever you're tuning in, it, me it means a lot and it helps people see this podcast more and more. Payment, anything you'd like to share in closing? Well, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. And I'm kind of sad that it's already finished. This is a kind of, I've been in tons of podcasts. It's the kind of podcast that you wish that never, never ends because we, 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 we vibe so well. Talking to you is always a pleasure. And honestly, I'm sad that it's already finished. But you know what? It will be part two. And, and I will extend the invitation for you to come back on my podcast because we did one back in December of 2020. So it's long due for a part two. Yeah. So, uh, I love talking to you. Thank you. I love what you're doing. Love your impact. Thank you for sharing, uh, you know, for grabbing the beautiful gift that your father gave you to really spread your wings, not live small anymore, embrace your power and share it to the world. And that's how we connected. So thank you. And keep shining your light. Keep uh, blessing the world with your presence, with your impact, with your smile. With everything you do, stay safe, stay awesome. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much, man. That means the world. Like I mind. said at the beginning of the show, you know, my life's work is to help leaders, champions, and high performers to experience more happiness, peace, and fulfillment as they create an extraordinary life without regret. If you've got goals, dreams, challenges right now that you're experiencing around your business, your mindset, your relationships, your happiness, your health, your spirituality, it's that full spectrum of the human experience. Let's have a conversation. Let's dive deep and let's see what it is you'd love to create and see if or how I can help you get there. If you'd like to do that, you can book a call on my website, jamilsayage.com. I'll have that link in the show notes in addition to everything Payman talked about for himself. And again, I mentioned those videos that I've created over the years, blog posts, quotes, all that's on my social media. It's on Facebook, just Jamil Sayage, my name. And on Instagram, it's Dr. Jamil Sayage, DR, and then my name. I'll have the links in the show notes as well. You know, this podcast is called Transformation Starts Today. And I called it that because I have found that most people's favorite day to change their life is tomorrow. And that's why they stay stuck. But you can be different. You can listen to what we talked about today, mine for the gold nuggets, go through it again and get into action, get into sharing, get into the application of it, say yes. And you never know what's going to happen as a result of that. But I promise you, you'll be happy you did. God bless. Say, you the best and all say yes to yourself. Say yes to your dreams. And what if it works? What if it works? And you'll only know if you give it a shot. Take care, everyone. Take care. All right. Thank you for being with us today. If this conversation served you, it would mean a lot if you left a review and shared this with anyone who may benefit. An extraordinary life without regret is available to you now. Choose it. It's your time.